Hi guys, it's Mr. Irvin here, and we're gonna be talking about foreign policy in the 1970s. So a few background things that we need to note before we get into this. Number one, the Cold War is still going on between us and the Soviet Union. And so America is still committed to stopping the spread of communism. It's also important to note that going into the 1970s, uh, Vietnam was also continuing. And so what we're gonna see emerging in the 1970s is a series of presidents who are gonna kind of all try to put their own spin on the Cold War and the concept of containment, which is a continuity that runs throughout the Cold War and is a policy that is generally accepted uh, by most American presidents. So the first president that we're gonna be looking at who's really important and was already mentioned in an earlier lecture was Richard Nixon. He's going to be winding down the uh, Vietnam War with a policy called Vietnamization, which I'll talk more about in a second. But he's also very important because he's gonna establish a policy called detente. And one of the things that we need to understand and remember is that throughout the course of the Cold War, there are periods of rising tensions between us and the Soviet Union, and then times of easing tensions. And in the 1970s, for the most part, uh, our tensions are easing between the United States and the Soviet Union. And a big part of that is Richard Nixon's policy of detente. Now, that policy is going to be continued by um, his predecessor, um, which is Gerald Ford. And then that's going to be continued later, or at least attempted, uh, by Jimmy Carter. But we're going to see by the end of the decade, detente is going to kind of disappear, and tensions are going to rise again by the end of 1970s and into the 1980s. So what we want to do is just kind of go through each of these presidents and talk about their general policies and also uh, some of the key events that you should know uh, when thinking about them in the 1970s. All right, so, so I really want to quickly go through this idea of Vietnamization. Uh, mainly because it was already covered in an earlier lecture. But let's just remember that you know, Vietnam still made up a large part of Nixon's um, foreign policy. And a big part of what he was trying to do was draw down American troops who were doing the fighting in Vietnam and instead turn over those fighting responsibilities to uh, South Vietnamese troops. And what Nixon was trying to do was accomplish what he called uh, peace with honor. Um, and he wanted to be able to leave Vietnam without uh, the United States looking like it had been defeated. Um, and it was able to actually leave Vietnam by 1973, largely with the help of his Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, who was able to negotiate uh, the Vietnam Accords, uh, which allowed the United States to completely remove its troops uh, by 1973. But our main focus today is going to be more on some of the other policies that uh, Nixon engaged with, the most notably detente. Uh, and detente was this easing of tensions between essentially the United States and the Soviet Union, the Western world, which was capitalist, and the communist world of the East. And both countries had a lot to gain from this, not friendship, that's too strong of a word, but um, you know, the, the thawing of tensions. Uh, most notably, uh, it would allow us to maybe increase trade. Uh, and secondly, it would allow us to maybe slow down the, um, the arms race that had been going on since really the 1950s. So how did America do this? There's a number of examples of detente that we need to note. Now, one of the first things that Nixon did was um, he actually was one of the first presidents to go and visit China since China had fallen to communism in 1949. And so what he's doing is he's reestablishing relations with China after having been cut off for decades. Um, and this allows for America now to not only uh, openly negotiate with uh, China, but also it opens the door for trade. So that's a really important first step. Um, at the same time, he's trying to reduce uh, arms between us and the, the Soviet Union. Um, so obviously the, the ghosts of the Cuban Missile Crisis were still in the minds of a lot of Americans and politicians. And there was this fear that we were kind of on a path towards mutual assured destruction or MAD. Uh, and so SALT-1 was negotiated and signed in 1972, which reduced the number of ballistic missiles that were in the arsenal of both the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, missiles like this intercontinental ballistic missile that we can see here, uh, the Titan II, which was capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. Okay, so all of these things show an easing of tension between us and the Soviet Union. But it is important to note that it is not the only you know, um, foreign policy challenges that Nixon faced during his time in office. Um, another major challenge, in addition to Vietnam, uh, in addition to obviously 
like creating less tension between him and the Soviet Union with detente. Uh, there was also a, a growing energy crisis in the United States. And America faced what we call an oil embargo in 1973 when oil was cut off to the United States. Now, a big reason for that is something called the Yom Kippur War. So the Yom Kippur War was between primarily Egypt and Israel. And Egypt surprised attacked uh, Israel in order to gain back land that it had lost from uh, Israel in 1967. Um, and this basically kind of caused Israel to have to retreat. Uh, and it was from aid given by the United States in the form of billions of dollars uh, worth of equipment that Israel was able to kind of defend itself. Now, that support by the United States for Israel did not sit well with Egypt and some of the other countries that were part of a larger organization known as OPEC. And OPEC was one of the largest oil producing um, like organizations. It was a, a series of countries that produced oil uh, that were mainly from the Mideast. Um, and, and this had major consequences. When they upsetting OPEC uh, caused them to cut off oil from the, to the United States. And what that did was it led to oil shortages within America. And as Mr. Brigham talked about, what that's going to do is it's going to lead to an economic crisis as we see huge inflation in America and, uh, and major economic problems, a recession that takes place as we no longer have access to cheap oil. Um, so this is a major problem that um, not only would Richard Nixon have to navigate, but other, country, other Americans would have to kind of come to uh, you know, the realization that we were tied globally um, to oil from other countries. Now, um, when Gerald Ford takes over after Nixon resigns due to Watergate, um, he tries to continue this policy of detente. Um, and probably the best example of him trying to continue this policy of detente is the Helsinki Accords, which are passed in 1975. Um, and the Helsinki Accords basically just uh, recognize the lands that the Soviet Union had gained um, after World War II. Uh, it also tried to establish better communication and the sharing of um, you know, food and information and technology between you know, the West and the East. Um, the Helsinki Accords did kind of keep detente going for a while, but it's important to note that as the, the decade progressed, um, detente would start to deteriorate. And we'll look at why in a second. Now, um, unfortunately for uh, Gerald Ford, uh, he also faced other challenges. One of the biggest uh, challenges that he faced was the fall of South Vietnam to communism. Um, and so the United States had actually le left South Vietnam by 1973, and we had left it. It was still a democratic country. It wasn't communist. Uh, and it was the South Vietnamese uh, army that was holding off North Vietnam and the communists. And, and by 1975, the North Vietnamese army had overrun uh, South Vietnam with the help of the Viet Cong. Uh, and we see the, the capital of South Vietnam, Saigon, fall to communism. And so Vietnam is reuniting under one communist country. So this is a major blow to a lot of Americans uh, who remember, you know, we had been fighting the Vietnam War to prevent this very thing for such a long, long period of time. To see the South Vietnam fall to communism was something that was obviously very difficult. Um, and uh, it was detrimental to, to Ford and his presidency. Um, Ford, for a number of reasons, isn't elected uh, in 1976. And so taking over for Ford is Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy Carter is going to have a policy that's built on what we call humanitarian diplomacy or, or a focus on human rights. Uh, and so Jimmy Carter's main focus is trying to create peace around the world for other groups of people, just so people are treated fairly. Uh, we see this in a number of different uh, places, probably most notably here in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, we see Jimmy uh, Carter negotiating to give the Panama Canal back to uh, the Panamese people. We also see probably one of the most important accomplishments of Jimmy Carter's foreign policy, the Camp David Accords, uh, which brought together uh, representatives from Israel and Egypt to Camp David. Now, these countries had just fought multiple wars over the course of the last few decades. Uh, and it's at the Camp David Accords um, that the two countries uh, basically took a big step towards peace. Uh, Israel gave back land to Egypt and in return, Egypt uh, recognized Israel's uh, borders. Uh, and so obviously this was a major step towards peace in the Middle East. Um, we also see attempts at continuing the arms reduction treaties that had begun under Nixon. So there was an attempt at a second SALT treaty uh, in 1979. 
Salt II, as it became known, never got past though. And that's because, as I was saying before, uh, there's this deterioration in relations between us and the Soviet Union. So there's a number of reasons why um, like the detente begins to deteriorate. Um, part of it is, is challenges that America is facing overseas, um, primarily in Iran. So you got the Iranian revolution that's happening in 1979. Um, and remember, the United States had helped like bring a new gun, uh, government to, to power in Iran in 1953 uh, with the help of the CIA and covert actions. And now, um, that, that go as that government was unpopular, it was overthrown. And um, because America was associated with that old government, there was a lot of hatred within Iran towards uh, the American government. Uh, and so there's a group of students who stormed the U.S. Embassy in 1979. And as they stormed the U.S. Embassy, they take Americans who are working in that embassy hostage. Now, this creates the Iran hostage crisis, which is going to last from 1979 all the way through 1981. And this creates tension between us and um, Iran. Um, and it, uh, we actually attempt to free those hostages. It fails under Jimmy Carter. Uh, and we also have some economic consequences of that as well, as Iran cuts off oil to the United States and sparks another um, energy crisis at the end of the decade. But at the exact same time that the uh, Iran hostage crisis is going on, the Soviet Union invades Afghanistan. And that kind of really kind of kills detente um, because we see this as uh, the Soviet Union trying to uh, make a play for uh, the Middle East. Afghanistan is right next to Iran, and we feel like um, the Soviet Union is trying to gain influence in that area. Uh, and so uh, immediately the United States breaks off relations with the, the Soviet Union. Obviously the SALT II treaty is just defeated. Uh, we actually cut off an embargo grain that we had been sending to the Soviet Union. Uh, we start to criticize the Soviet Union uh, about human vi rights violations. And this leads to um, obviously a deterioration that's going to like actually amp up tensions during the Cold War. And those tensions are further solidified with the election of Ronald Reagan in 1980, who takes a much more hardline stance against the Soviet Union. And we're going to see how that plays out as part of the Cold War in a later lecture. So take care.